Hello there, I'm Patrick and welcome to the painting phase and in this video we're going to be unboxing an entire suitcase's worth of third gen acrylic paints from AK Interactive. Being a fledgling YouTube channel in the hobby space, we've been on the lookout for supplies and ideas for future videos. Being relatively new to the hobby, I've been following a lot of YouTube tutorials, which you can follow the action up here and see what I've been doing with my Iron Warriors. And going through those, I've just been buying usually Citadel paints as and when I've needed them to follow these specific videos. Here at the painting phase, we are really keen to try out these new paints, stack them up against some other brands and see how they come out. But really, it's just great to have some extra colors in the arsenal that we can pull out as and when we need them but enough about why I bought these paints let's get into what you actually get in the box <coughs> Kill me. 11 kilograms 236 paints we have this beautiful two-story suitcase containing everything from AK Interactive's third gen acrylic range. Get some of the boring nitty gritty out of the way first. It does come with a carry case and two keys, which I currently don't have any use for, but who knows, maybe in the future. The case comes with two stories or two compartments with the paint pretty evenly split between the two levels. The build quality of this case is really good. It's doubled up as a seat in my tiny office space slash studio space that I have here, and it hasn't broken. The black plastic that they've used to construct the side of the suitcase is quite abrasive, so be wary of losing some skin if you do brush up against it a little too vigorously. Getting inside of the case, each one of the 236 paints has its own cut foam space and everything looks incredibly neat. This as a storage solution for me is an incredible bonus because my office is pretty tiny and all of my hobby supplies are pretty much hidden out of frame. I've tried some of the laser cut wooden paint racks. I've also got some of the plastic versions from Games Workshop and I can't say that I've been a huge fan. Reorganizing my Citadel paints into those racks can be a massive pain. Brother. In so quite often they end up a bit unorganized on the floor and then I'm kicking them around and it is just a complete mess. Please don't judge me. Whereas this suitcase eliminates all of those problems. Opening it up is incredibly satisfying. It's just like seeing a wargaming rainbow of joy. Moving on to the paints themselves, they're all in the small dropper bottles, which will seem very familiar if you've used anything from Vallejo's range. The main visual difference being the caps have two textures on, so you can really get a bit of leverage if any paint gets dried on the inside of the cap. Apparently the inside of the cap has been designed to help prevent blockages, but I can't attest to if that works or not, because I'm just opening them for the first time. This isn't a review, just an unboxing. One of the first things you see when you open the paperwork that comes with this is they suggest dropping some of the paint into the cap of the lid so when you open your suitcase you can see what the colour is going to look like. They do make it look very simple and straightforward to do this in the book but doing it 236 times apart from being a bit laborious a few air bubbles later some of these caps certainly are a bit messy than they were when I first got them. I'm looking at you, laser magenta, you heretic, burn them all, deviant. The paints are then split up into different categories and it's the colors of the labels that denote what kind of paint they are. So we start off with our orange label paints, which include all of the average paints in the range, as well as fluorescent and some of the clear colors as well. Moving on, we've got light blue, which is all of the pastels. Then we have dark blue, which is all of the metallics. There's all of the gun metals and the golds and brass that we're used to in these kind of paint ranges, but there's some really interesting, bright, colored metallics, which I'm gonna have to try and find a use for. The gray denotes the mediums, all your varnishes, etc. The brown or the black label means you're playing with an ink. And then the yellow labels, and I quote, these tones contain pigments of high purity and high concentration for the most vivid colors. I 
think these are some of the paints that I'm the most excited to try. Everybody has experience with the whites and the blacks from the Cicidel range and they have quite a poor reputation. So I am really excited to try some of these, which I do hear are great. So as far as mini wargaming channels go, we firmly fall in the predominantly Warhammer 40k camp. And looking at this set of paints, it's certainly designed for historical wargaming. All of the literature that comes with it, the majority of the pictures on the website are all painting dioramas, tanks and aeroplanes. It is quite nice to look through this collection and see colours like yellow, golden yellow, deep yellow and radiant yellow. Would you believe greenish white actually looks like a greenish white? Having descriptive colour names who'd have thought is quite helpful. There are some specific army colours like British khaki, Japanese brown to name but two. They sound like they are based on uniforms or certain shades but I could well be incorrect. I can appreciate the simpleness of this naming scheme coming from Citadel Paints where if I need to paint a Blood Angel I need Mephiston Red, Wild Rider Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, Fire Dragon Bright. I mean you do get used to the names I guess but it will be quite nice just to go red. So let's move on to cost and how well they stack up against the competition. I'm going to be directly comparing them against the two other main brands of paints that I have behind me, which is Citadel and Pro Acrylic. At retail in the UK, you can expect to pay £2.75 for a Citadel paint with the exception of a couple of the metallic paints, which are £3.75. All Pro Acrylic paints are £3.99 and AK is coming in at £2.94. Working out the cost per milliliter of paint, we've got Citadel at 23p per mil. Some of those expensive metallics go up to 31. Pro Acryl at 18 pence a mil, and then AK coming in just underneath at 17. If we take into account the discount for buying the case and all of the paints in bulk, the price falls quite considerably from 294 to roughly 254, and 17 pence per mil down to 14 by Grabthar's Hammer. What a saving. Obviously buying all of it in bulk up front is expensive. This entire box was about 600 pounds, which is a lot of money. But if you are in the market for buying an entire range of paints in its own suitcase, that looks awesome for your own YouTube channel. This is quite a good way to go, I think. So there we have it. So there we have it. That is what is in the box. I'm looking forward to trying these out after I get my Iron Warriors out of the way. You can expect some comparison videos with the three paint brands. Maybe we'll throw Vallejo in there as well if I get some more, but I don't think I need to buy any more paint right now. Maybe I'll paint some Custodes. I love Custodes. Anyway, the only thing I've got left to do is tell Jeff that I bought an entire suitcase of paint. Let's see what he says. Oh, this is so heavy. Oh my giddy. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> oh, Fabian. Me. Oh, God, the sense machine's in this money. Oh my good God. So this it's... is. No. This is all of the third gen acrylics uh, that we can use. <laughs> <laughs> You're a. You are a. Heresy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 